I'd like to thank you for inviting me and uh, thank you for being a, a captive audience. I hope some of the stuff that I will talk about will be, you'll find it useful in your work. And I'll have to make a few disclaimers. The first one is the word drought doesn't appear even once in my slides. This is really t uh, about a tool that may be useful for your work. The second disclaimer is that is the name. There's, it's not really the Microsoft Geospatial Library. It's a, it's a part of SQL Server. It's more of a wishful thinking on our side that uh, it's, it's a more general tool. And maybe one day you'll see it uh, repackaged as a more general purpose tool. So I'll talk a little bit about SQL Server and the SQLness of this library. But it, it is useful um, and it's usable without SQL Server. So first of all, in, in uh, SQL Server 2008, Microsoft introduced support for uh, spatial data types. And to give you an idea of what it looks like, in a database you can have a table. In a table, a, a row is a, re a record and a column uh, is one of the fields in the record. So in, in this uh, example, the, the, table, the column name is uh, GeoNameID. I'm sorry. Oh, it doesn't even say that. Uh, from GeoNames. OK. Uh, yeah. The, 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 it has a, um, a spatial, uh, a, a column of uh, spatial type. And this is what a SQL query looks like. And here comes my second uh, disclaimer. I could not write a SQL query to save my life. Uh, I've been working on an on a, uh, implementation under the hood. So I, I'll, I'll be talking much more about the C-sharp interface. And you can ask me about even the C++ implementation. But uh, I hope you'll get a good idea how to use this library. So here's an example of a SQL query. So you have a table here. And you want to select all the uh, rows in the uh, object where the distance is less than um, 10,000 here. Now, um, when it was implemented in, for SQL Server 2008, the decision was made to implement it as a user, internally as a user-defined type using what, what's called a CLR integration, the integration of C-sharp in SQL Server. And that requires uh, a, C, a .NET library that when a query like this, when a query like this uh, is executed, then uh, it, it really is delegated to C Sharp code. The uh, SQL Server engine knows very little about the, the data type, and all the computations are done in that library. And then almost as an, an afterthought, it was decided to uh, make the library available as a free download so uh, it can be used with or without SQL Server. Uh, as, so this is really the, the, the correct name is the SQL Server System CLR Types Library. And if you Bing or Google for, for these words, <laughs> you, you, will, uh, you will be led to a web page where you can download the library. Loud, it will be installed on your computer. You have to use Windows, though. <laughs> and, uh, and then you can, you can use it in your, in your um, C-sharp programs. The SQLness of it is that the data types are uh, SQL this and SQL that. So for example, <coughs> if you compute the area, you won't get a double, but you get a SQL double. And that's one of the requirements of, uh, of the quirks of the uh, SQL language. By the way, SQL is standard query language, and is, is that when um, uh, the database cannot give you a meaningful result, it returns null, which is not, it's different than it, it is in, in more uh, C-like programming languages. So uh, if you want, you, you'll get a SQL double, and if you really want the double, you will have to uh, invoke its uh, dot value uh, property. So it's, it's not a big deal, but sometimes it's a bit confusing when you start your writing 
you're declaring some, some double equal to the result of an area, and, and it tells you, the compiler tells you, no, it, it's not compatible, but you have to say the value of that SQL double. Other than that, it's fairly uh, general purpose. And the library doesn't depend on SQL Server. It doesn't have to be installed on your computer. On the other side, you can, if you uh, do use SQL Server and you query the server, you can choose how many computations can be done on the server or you have the library on, your, on the client and you can do some of the computations on the client, which may speed up the execution. And you'll find the documentation for the library in MSDN. <coughs> So what, what do we mean by geospatial data? It's fairly generic, no, no droughts. We have uh, the, the types, it's, it's really geometry. We have points that represents maybe points of interest, uh, line strings, and that's a bit extended and I'll talk about it later in the, in the next version. What I'm talking about now is the current version, the current released version. So a line string may represent a road or a river a polygon may uh, represent anything that ha that's, has an area, like a state, a continent, a lake. And, and polygon is, is a bit more general. It's, uh, can, a polygon can have holes in it. And then there are collections. <coughs> so several polygons would be a multi-polygon and multi-this and multi-that, and a geometry collection, which can be a collection of mixed dimensions. This is a bit of a cumbersome uh, hierarchy, but it's stipulated by a public uh, standard. It's the Open Geospatial Consortium Simple Feature uh, Object Model, which the uh, library and SQL uh, Server support. So what operations can you do on the data? <coughs> Set operations, well, these are constructions. So you, you, you have, uh, the, the four basis operations, union, union intersection, di subtract, and, and symmetric difference. <coughs> you have uh, spatial queries, which are similar, but only they return true, false. Do, do these things intersect or do they overlap to analyze the, the spatial relationship between objects? And in intersect is a catch-all. So if it overlaps or touches or contains or within, then it intersects. By the way, feel free to interrupt me with questions. <coughs> has numerical in, uh, computations, like length and area, distance, which is the minimal distance between two objects, and some other constructions, like a very popular one is buffer, which is construct the region uh, of all the points within a given distance from a point, like uh, every, oh, everything that's within two miles from uh, I-65, uh, and convex hull, which is a bit less used. Some other constructions, um, centroid, reduce, allows you to get a representation, an approximate, uh, approximation of an object with le uh, less data. It's like data reduction. The objects come in, in, in two types. Uh, in uh, planar uh, XY coordinates or round Earth with lo longitude latitude coordinates. So what's the difference between them? This is a, a, an anecdote that we like to tell about an article in The Economist uh, several years ago that where this uh, graph uh, displays the threat of the North Korean missiles. And after some comments from readers, they had to correct it and show the real region because they simply took a planar map and drew circles around it, which is, uh, and this is uh, a, an example of um, very uh, common mis uh, misconceptions about the difference, the quirks of uh, data on around Earth. We, we really think planar. We, 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 we know somewhere that the, the earth, earth is round, but much of our thinking is planar. Here's another example. Uh, what's the distance between Anchorage and Tokyo? So the red line depicts what you'd, look, you'd see on the map, but the yellow line is what happens on around Earth. And uh, we, uh, our two types reflect the difference in behavior between these two types of uh, data. So the question is why, if the world is round, why do we bother with uh, planar data? 
So it turns out that uh, huge amounts of data are represented on planar maps. For example, um, what's called cadastral data, uh, property lines, or parcel um, boundaries, are represented on, on state maps. So to uh, capture this difference, the library uh, exposes two classes. SQL geometry, where all computations are done in x, y coordinates on, on, a planar, on planar maps. And SQL geography, where, where coordinates are longitude latitude, and, uh, and the computations are done on an elliptic, ellipsoid Earth model, because the Earth is not spherical. It's a bit squished at the poles, as you know. Um, the SQL geometry complete, uh, uh, complies with the, this uh, published uh, standard that I mentioned before. There's no similar standard for round Earth, so we try to follow it as much as possible, where it, uh, uh, with the exception of places where it doesn't make sense. Uh, so the syntax is very, uh, very similar, and there are just subtle differences in, in the actual semantics. Um, because of the limitations of, uh, of uh, the SQL interface, these are not, there's, there's no inheritance, for those of you who know object-oriented languages, there's no geometry class, SQL geometry class with subclasses for polygons and, lines, and line strings. Um, it's just uh, differentiation simply by a type property. So here's an example of what uh, your source code may look like if you write a program with the spatial, spatial library. So you have to, <coughs> you have to use uh, uh, the, these, da these SQL data types, and you have to declare that you use the, the li um, add the library to, uh, as a reference to your project. And then here's a Hello World uh, program. So you instantiate a, a SQL geometry from uh, what's called well-known text. Again, it's a, it's a public standard. And then you just write it down, and, and this is what you get. Something slightly more interesting, you may want to do the intersection of the red triangle with a blue line, which is, there's no line object, but it's a line string with one segment. So you instantiate the two, and then you, I'm sorry, not to intersect, the union. And then you perform the the union operation, everything starts with ST. This is the public standard. And uh, this is what you get as the result. Um, so the result will be a geometry collection because it's mixed. It's a union of, of the triangle with the line. Only the line will be truncated to, to the part that's outside. Uh, if there's anything really useful that I can convey to you, if you ever use the library in, in, in this presentation, is the sync interface, which is a real difference be differentiator between the uh, SQL interface and the C-sharp. This is only exposed in the, uh, in the programming interface. Uh, if you used to, uh, if you write programs, uh, your first inclination when you have a, a class, an instance of a class, let's say a polygon, is to go query it. <coughs> how many rings, uh, tell me how many rings you have, Give me the first ring. Ring is, is one boundary loop. Uh, give me the first point, give me the next point, and then you, you loop over the points and you do something with it. Uh, in this library, it's a very inefficient way of doing it. And the right way to do it is, as I say, is that don't call me, I'll call you. So what you do is well, we, we expose a, uh, a public interface, actually two interfaces, geometry sync and, and a similar equivalent geography sync, that have these methods, callback methods. And if you need the, um, you, you want to do something with the data, you, in, you uh, derive a class from that interface, and then you call the instance of your geometry or geography, and you say, populate me. It will call you back with, with the, in this syntax. <coughs> so what you have to do is you implement these methods, and you, you have them do what you want to do with the data. And I'll, I'll run you through a, I'll, I'll, in a minute I'll show you a simple example. The flip side of that is that this is how you can construct um, an instance of SQL geometry or SQL geography programmatically. 
<coughs> because the uh, class exposes uh, two classes, SQL Geometry Builder and Geography Builder, which support this interface. So uh, you instantiate a builder, you call it with your data, and then you get the result as the constructed geography or constructed geometry uh, property of that, of that uh, instance. So here's an example, and it's, it's a real example. We've, I've actually used it in, in internally in, in some new uh, feature in, in SQL Server. Uh, suppose you want to, you have data and you want to normalize the longitude. Longitude can be exceed uh, 360. Or, uh, my, uh, the typical is between minus 180 and 180. But you want to normalize it maybe because you want to draw a map. So here is a, a class longitude normalizer, which is derived from geography sync. And uh, it, it has a, a geography builder, which will build the result, which is a normalized, uh, the, the normalized version of this uh, geography. And then um, what, and, and you need a, a, a method which is uh, uh, compute the normalized, uh, this is compute the normalized longitude. If it exceeds 180, just pull it back into the domain. And then you um, implement these methods. <coughs> Upon begin geography, you just call the building begin geography. Uh, these methods you just call the, you just pass along. But uh, when you get the begin figure call that actually has a longitude latitude, you just call this uh, uh, get normalized latitude, and you pass it on to the builder. When you're done, you, you, you call builder get constructed uh, geography, and you get the, uh, the version of the object with the normalized geography. I hope uh, I haven't bored you too much with this. If you, if you write code, I think, um, that may appeal to you because it simplifies, it's much simpler than having to have a very complicated if statement. What if it's a polygon? What if it's a point? And what if it's a line? Here you just get called and, and, and you do what you told. So here's how you get the result at the end. <coughs> um, I think this just duplicates the previous slide. Okay, um, just a little bit of what happens under the hood in case you want to know a bit uh, about the theory, not much. There's an interesting aspect of it uh, that is the, the curse of geometric algorithms. And, and uh, the problem is that in, in, when you do geometric, uh, when you perform geometric uh, uh, constructions like the union of two polygons, you often have to make decision to branch out depending on whether things are going left or right. <coughs> so you have to have uh, uh, you have to respond to the uh, geometric query: is the blue line to the left or the right of the red line? And the decision is based on computer arithmetic, which is inherently approximate. You can't, you don't have exact computations of real numbers in computers. <clears throat> so the problem occurs when it's very close and it's hard to decide whether it's exactly the coincide or, or the left or on the right. Unlike uh, other um, scientific computations, if you m uh, make the wrong decision, you don't just get approximately close result. The result will be completely wrong. Um, so how, 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 how is that handled? And I think we have an expert here. The, uh, the seminal work on that was done by Chris um, Hoffman, who's sitting here. Uh, the, the, on, the, the, the only known way to address it now is to use exact and interval arithmetic. The problem is each one of those questions boils down to the answer whether some exp rational expression is positive, negative, or zero. And uh, the, the only way to do it robustly and always give the right answer is to uh, 
perform the operation with interval arithmetic, and then when that fails, to do it with exact arithmetic, which can be expensive, but that's the only way to do it robustly. Um, so not everybody does it, but uh, so our, our, our claim is that our algorithms are uh, at least uh, barring uh, coding bugs are fully robust. Uh, the, the version of the library that um, has, has been released in 2008 has the, um, uh, sadly had this re restriction that um, objects have to be restricted to less than a hemisphere. It doesn't have to be a northern or southern hemisphere, but they cannot be bigger. They have to be contained in a hemisphere. And the, an operation is restricted even if the objects are smaller than a hemisphere. The, the scene of the operation has to be contained in a hemisphere. So you can ev even have two objects that are contained, and each one is contained in a hemisphere, and their intersection is contained in the hemisphere, but the operation cannot be performed with because the scene that contains the two objects is more than a hemisphere. That was strictly because we were in a hurry and we didn't have time to do it, and it's actually surprisingly difficult to do it right. So, so far I talked about the the release library. So what's new? There'll be a new version of SQL Server sometime, probably early next year, and um, with it, uh, and, um, a new version of the library. This is all available for uh, what we call CTP, Community Technology Preview, so you can have access to it and, and download it and uh, play with it. And there, the, the main New features are that um, hemisphere uh, restriction is gone, so now you can have objects that there's actually an entire globe object. Imagine that the, the union of two things can be the entire world. We've added support for circular arcs, both in the plane and on around Earth. It's a bit tricky on an ellipsoid, what's exactly a circular arc on an ellipsoid. Uh, we have uh, numerous performance improvements and accurate improvements. I added some new things like um, aggregates, which were not available in, in the um, previous version. It's not so important in the library, but uh, it is in, in SQL, that you can have the, not just the area, but the area of an entire table, all the objects in a table. Um, I should add that um, I neglected to mention that what you get in SQL Server that you don't get in the library is a spatial index. Spatial index is a way to speed up an operation when there's lots of objects. Like uh, find the nearest neighbor to or, or the, the 15 closest points to a given object. If you have a big database, just traversing the database is expensive. So that's it speeded up when you have an index. And in, in the new version of uh, SQL Server, you will have, you, um, that happened after I prepared this slide, is uh, there's uh, support for nearest neighbor. Here are some resources. You, you get a copy of these uh, slides, so you, you have all the links there. Um, you can, down, this is where you, uh, the, the download site of the library. Uh, there's a book about uh, SQL Server 2008 spatial features. Uh, all, uh, MSDN, just you go to MSDN and look for SQL geography or SQL geometry, you get everything about these classes. There's uh, various blogs about it. The serializ serialization format is public. So you, you can use, uh, you can actually, if you really want to get your hands dirty, you can access the data directly. <coughs> and there's some uh, spatial code, uh, sample code posted on CodePlex that can guide you for writing your own applications. That's it.
Well, when you talk about satellite data, we, we do have uh, a totally separate uh, division, uh, uh, Bing, Bing Maps, or I think it's called Bing Mobile now, where you have satellite imagery. I don't know that we have uh, other kind of satellite data. And I don't know that we, other than Bing, that we are very much in the market of data. We more in the market of uh, tools for processing data. Any other questions? 